Hello, and welcome to uh, this episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. I'm Doug, and I'm happy you're here. So, in the last episode, we uh, cleared out the town of Provoca, and we got a ship as our reward. In the last appendix episode, I uh, showed off what there was to get in Provoca, and I also went to the Peninsula Power, a fun little glitch in Final Fantasy 1, uh, that allowed you to fight monsters um, from a late game area a little bit earlier than you're supposed to and uh, we got some gill and XP from that. So, uh, fun little story. Uh, my audio and video was saved from that, but unfortunately I forgot to save my game. So, you might notice that I have a little less gill and the time might be a little bit different because I had to go back and uh, redo that little uh, bit of the adventure. But I uh, took care of it all and um, we're back where we left off. And I also decided to switch Walt and Monty around because uh, I went over it earlier, but the position a uh, party member is in the formation. If they're at the top of the screen, um, they're at the front of the formation, and if they're at the bottom, they're in the back. Their position uh, determines the likelihood of enemies targeting them, and I switched Walt and Monty around because Walt has much more defense, much more HP than Monty, and I noticed in uh, previous fights that Monty was uh, taking a lot of hits, and I had to spend a turn or two with Walt and Lily uh, healing up Monty just to make sure that he uh, wouldn't go down. So I'm hoping that uh, Monty will be uh, taking less damage and I can focus more on attacking with him, and that this way uh, there'll be less time wasted uh, healing Monty and making sure that he's uh, okay, and I hope it'll just be a little bit more efficient. Uh, we'll eventually get to a point where it won't matter if our characters go down, but that's still for a little while. But anyways, in this episode, I will be uh, showing off the ship, showing off a fun little mini game on it, and I'll also be uh, showing off the next area that we need to go to in our little quest, the uh, town of Elfheim. Uh, points to you if you can guess uh, who lives there. But anyways, on to the boat. Um, there's a nice little uh, soundtrack for it. Um, and there's also a minigame, which I mentioned just a second ago. So in order to access it, you have to hold down the A button and press the B button multiple times. Now, the amount of times that you need to do it uh, vary based on the uh, version you're playing on, anywhere between 22 and 55 times. So now this is a puzzle where you have to uh, line up, excuse me, where you need to line up a bunch of tiles. Uh, the numbers ranging from 1 to 15, on a 4x4 four four grid. This puzzle has been kicking my butt for the past 30 minutes or so. So I found a strategy online to help me. I'm going to use it and hopefully I can get it done in a decent amount of time. Now uh, this puzzle is useful because it can help you get good items and gill at a decent pace if you can figure out how to uh, beat it. Um, I'm only going to do this once, just to show off what it is, how it works, and hopefully show off what you can get from it. Um, if you're playing on your own, you can play it as much to your heart's content as you want. Uh, me personally, I'm just going to, like I said, play it once, hopefully get it done, and uh, get going. But I'm not, uh, I'm going to try to beat this. If it seems like it's taking up too much time, I'm probably going to quit. Uh, just so I can show off a little bit more and maybe I'll come back to it when I have a little more time. I uh, might save this for an appendix episode if I uh, feel like it's necessary, but let's uh, dive in. So, uh, let's see. So the strategy I uh, found online recommends that you uh, get the first block into place uh, first. First things first. <laughs> All right. So, uh, as you can see, uh, if a block is in its proper place, then it will be red, and if it's not, it'll uh, be blue. Alright, so 
Uh, let's get number two. All right. Do -do 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 -do. Jump. All right. Do -do -do. All right. So. Well, I'm actually uh, doing a little bit better than I uh, had been previously. Yeah, the uh, rewards for this are uh, based on time and com completion time. As you can see, it's timed up there in the corner. I'm going to uh, eventually uh, post what the completion times are. Um, probably in the description or on, as like a little box uh, up on the side. But uh, just know that... Uh, it's definitely one of those more practice-based uh, ones, I'd say. All right, let's go. Yeah, there's a certain, like I said, there's kind of like this certain strategy to it that uh, I'm still trying to uh, learn. I think I got the general gist of it. So let's do this. Do, 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 do. All right. Do, 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 do. Boom, there we go, okay. I think I'm starting to get the hang of this. Yeah, so the idea is that you wanna get the first three lined up perfectly, and then after that you wanna get the following. Okay. And then you want to get like the third one in uh, the fourth position so you can Hmm. Alright, yeah. The strategy does seem to get a little bit harder as you go, but I'm trying to figure this out. Do, 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 do. Da, da, da. Okay. Oh gosh, this has now gotten so much harder. Okay. Oop, nope. Come on, I'm so close to getting this. Alright, so da, 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 da. There we go. Okay, so I, uh, I've played this three times already, as you can see there. I beat it once, and uh, my reward for being in it at uh, three minutes and 32 seconds is one potion. Um, so yeah, that is Play Puzzle 15. It is kind of tedious. Uh, I'll post a link to the uh, guide I used to uh, finish this in case you're playing and you're interested. Oh crap, no, I do not want to play again. Okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're done. We're done. All right. Yes, uh, good. That's the puzzle. All right, so, uh, now, uh, we're gonna get going on this. Um, so yeah, you're just want, gonna want to start following the, uh, coast. And we're gonna fight. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm just going to, uh, converse. A little bit. Um, talk about things that are going on. Uh, actually, I think I want to start talking about uh, why I named the characters what I did. There we go. 93 experience, 171 gil. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think I'll just kind of go down the list, actually. Uh, there we go. And, uh, we'll just, uh, cure whoever needs it, which is Lily. So, yeah, I think I'll start with Sid. Awesome, he blocked. So, yeah, shields can actually block damage directly if you're, uh, lucky enough. And, okay, paralysis is, uh, it paralyzes you, and I think you need to use an item which, or a healing ability which, the name of which escapes me. 
All right, anyways, back to what I was trying to say about uh, Sid. So I've named uh, the warrior Sid because, um, well, it's kind of a weird exp explanation, but um, so the warrior is the basis of the character Warrior of Light in uh, Final Fantasy DC, which is kind of like the uh, Final Fantasy version of Smash Bros. Um, in Decidia, the Warrior of Light doesn't have a name. The, uh, there was this fun kind of little, uh, um, in the second game, Decidia 012, Duodecim, really weird name, Final Fantasy has a lot of that, get used to it, but, uh, in Decidia 012, the second game, there were, like, these, uh, fun little, uh, backstory report things that, uh, were sprinkled throughout the game, and there were some cutscenes where, uh, excuse me, uh, the Warrior of Light, who uh, doesn't have a canon name and didn't have a name in Decidia, uh, was uh, kind of questioned on it, and a character, Prish from Final Fantasy XI, which is a MMO game, uh, says, uh, hey, I figured it out. I'm obviously paraphrasing right now, but she's like, I have a name for you. And uh, there's a lot of speculation going on, like, what his name was, and there is uh, no canon name for him, but the theory that I uh, subscribe to is that he was uh, named Sid, which uh, a lot of people kind of picked up on because of some backstory elements that kind of implied that uh, he was uh, related to uh, the Sid of Final Fantasy 1 who is alluded to at times in uh, this game. And uh, I just like that idea. Like, I feel like Final Fantasy 1, you know, should have a Sid because there's always a character named Sid in each Final Fantasy. Except for Final Fantasy 1, I believe. So, uh, naming him Sid just kind of felt... Feels right for me. Just so that way, you know, I kind of keep the... That tradition of Final Fantasy, uh... Alive. And, uh... It's just my way of, like, keeping the kind of tiny little, uh... Um... I don't know what the exact word for it would be. That, like, little fan theory that I subscribe to alive. And... That's the nice thing about uh, this game is like since they have no canon names, I can uh, name them whatever I want. So uh, I want to mention something that uh, I've noticed a little bit is uh, that guy Big Eyes. He's using uh, an ability called Gaze, which uh, paralyzes. And like I mentioned a little bit earlier, if you're paralyzed, you can't move or anything. Someone else has to break you out of it. And I really wish I knew what the uh, ability or item it was to break you out of it, but... Uh, the thing is, is that gaze only lasts for combat, and the second you get out of fight, it's gone. So, uh, going down the list, we're going to uh, talk about Walt. And his name is, uh, kind of simple. Um, I was watching a Disney movie, um, Tangled, I believe. And, you know, Disney was on my brain. And I'm like, okay, uh, Walt just, he looks like a Walt, you know? Uh... I mean, not that, you know, all Waltz look a certain way, but, uh, that's just, uh, what I felt like, uh, the Red Mage, uh, looks like, you know, looks like a Waltz. So I'm just going to, uh, check to see if I'm in the right area, and it turns out I am. Speaking of, uh, Disney, uh, just today, actually, uh, at the D23 Expo, which is, like, a expo where, uh, Disney reveals, uh, and announces, uh, new projects and stuff. The two new Final Fan- not Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, uh, trailers just dropped, and if you don't know what Kingdom Hearts is, it's this really fun and very, uh, amazingly, uh, interesting, uh, crossover between Final Fantasy, which I'm playing, and, uh, Disney. It's very weird, and I'll definitely- I definitely plan on doing a Let's Play of the series eventually. But uh, the two the two trailers came out, and I am a huge Kingdom Hearts fan. And like you know, the games had a very uh, very long development. Kingdom Hearts three, uh, and like the franchise has such a weird history. But seeing the trailer has just made me very uh, I don't know, very cathartic in a way. Just seeing everything kind of coming together for this final uh, final part of this chapter of Kingdom Hearts, at least. So yeah, now we're in the city of Elfheim, and first things 
that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the inn. Don't really need to do much here. Um, it's just more to show off what the inn looks like here. Um, most of the enemies you fight on the sea aren't too threatening. Um, but it's uh, always good to go to the inn, at least I feel, at this, uh, every time you get to a new town for the first time. And also, I'm going to save, um, just in case uh, the worst happens and I happen to catch it on a camera. But anyways, uh, this is Elfheim, uh, and yep, elves live here. Um, Final Fantasy has a weird thing where uh, they don't typically, at least these days, go with uh, the traditional uh, fantasy races. Um, like, you know, elves, dwarves, and stuff, and they kind of have their own spin on them, but... Uh, this Final Fantasy was based off of the first edition of uh, Dungeons and Dragons, so it's really, really cool uh, that they have that. And it's like I'm a big D and D fan myself, so it's cool seeing like these parallels to uh, those kinds of things. So uh, yeah, I uh, I'm going to show you what there is to see. Uh, let's see what this guy has to say. First guy in town. What kind of voice do I want to give him? I just don't know what we can do. Please, help our prince. Guess I'm gonna give him like a more high fantasy voice. So, yep, that's my uh, British posh voice. Uh, sorry for anyone who's uh, British and hears that. I'm still learning. Alright, so, uh, we can uh, buy items. There's the iron uh, nunchaku. Sorry if I mispronounced that the dagger, the crossier, and the saber. Now, uh, none of those items are going to be any of uh, any use to us here. Um, sorry, I'm uh, reaching for a pen. So uh, that's good. I get to uh, cross. Yeah, awesome. All right. Yeah, sorry. I was just double checking my notes. My notes. Wow, that was very weird. I'm sorry. I'm recording this at like 2:30 right now, so I'm a little tired and out of it. But yeah, so uh, as you can see, that none of those items were really useful to me. And uh, like I mentioned earlier, the monk doesn't need any uh, weapons, and equipping him with weapons will actually inc decrease his damage output. But let's take a look at the magic that's uh, offered here. So, um, the interesting thing about Elfheim is that there are two magical stores selling level 3 and level 4 magic, uh, for both, uh, white and, uh, dark, uh, sorry, white and, uh, black mages specifically. So, the spells on hand are Fyra, Hold, Thandara, and, uh, Fokra. Uh, I'm going to be going with Fyra, Hold, uh, Thandara, and, uh, Fokara, I believe. Uh, I'm not going to get them yet. I'm going to have to grind because, as you can see, they were a thousand uh, gil apiece, and that is uh, quite ex uh, expensive. And uh, the thing with Final Fantasy, like I mentioned earlier, it's heavy on grinding, so you're going to have to fight a lot of monsters, and that's going to be your primary way of leveling up so you can survive the dungeons. Between uh, the grinding and uh, the items and experience you get that's kind of how you uh that's kind of how you survive the dungeons because the game gets really difficult in the mid game but then after that you kind of uh reach a point where you if you're fighting almost every enemy you come across you're going to uh be able to handle what the game throws at you until you get to uh until you beat the game and then after that there's some nice uh nice post main story content that you can do that really kind of pushes you to your limits Anyways, let's see what this uh, person has to say. I can't tell if they're a guy or a girl, so uh, I'm going to play this safe. I am a sage. When the time is right, the future is revealed to me. I shall wait patiently until then. I think they might have something important to say later, so I'll come back. Now, uh, in the uh, armor shop, we can see that there's iron armor, copper armlet, iron shield, Leather caps and helm. 
So uh, I'll be picking up a few of these after I uh, get enough gill for it all. I calculated all the gill I'm going to need to get, and there is a lot. But um, I'm going to do a little grinding on screen. Um, I'm going to call it at a certain point if I feel like I'm taking too much time to get it. But uh, here is the uh, dark magic. Uh, so there's Sleepra, Haste, Confuse, and Blizzara. So, uh, yeah, I'll go over uh, what these spills do at a, uh, after I get them. Um, there will be basically kind of two parts, one showing off uh, what all these things are, and then I'll edit in the footage of uh, me getting them and actually explaining what they are. So for white magic, there's Poisona, which cures poison, Fear, Null Frost, and Vox. And then uh, I need to find the last of the... Yep, there's the white magic store. Do -do -do. I'm going to run around. So yeah, there's a little graveyard. Um, you see a gravestone. You see a gravestone. Here lies Link. I think that's a reference to Legend of Zelda, I'm guessing. Um, and here we have Cura, Dyera, Null Blaze, and Heal. So yeah, those are the spells. Um, sorry if I wasn't informative enough for you. I'm uh, still learning, still trying to figure out everything, still trying to figure out the best way to present all this information to you. Thanks for uh, sticking with it. And uh, before we go out and start grinding, I'm going to talk to uh, this uh, fellow over here. No one knows where Atos, King of the Dark Elves, has gone. So I'm guessing Ast... What's his name? Astos is uh, going to be a, a boss that we'll have to take on later. And as you can see, there is a castle here. Um, we're not going to visit it just yet. You don't need to visit it. Um... Basically, you will uh, eventually. Uh, sorry, lost my train of thought. Basically, um, you will. Uh, you can do the primary quest in Elfheim without visiting the castle first, but you will uh, visit it after you take care of the uh, local dungeon and you know solve the locals' problem. So uh, I'm gonna just. Uh, talk for a little bit, talk about, uh, talk about the characters' names and everything, and, uh, then I'll probably call it and, uh, leave you guys with some footage of me just mindlessly, uh, fighting enemies. So, yeah, we're talking about names, we just finished up with Walt, and I'm going to, uh, I'm gonna save Monty for the end because, uh, there's kind of deeper meaning behind Monty's name that I kind of want to save to the end for the most importance. But, uh, Lily, I, uh, named because, um, when I first started this playthrough, I was, uh, playing Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and, uh, if you've played that game, you know that, uh, the character Lily is an important character, and, uh, she has blonde hair and has an outfit primarily made of white, and I just kind of connected the two, and since I was put on the spot with naming, because I did not plan this out beforehand, I uh, just went with Lily, because that's a girl's name, and I think the White Mage is a girl. There's been a lot of debate about this over the years, since the game is like 30 years old at this point, and you know, it's entirely up to uh, your personal interpretation. Like, any of these characters could be a uh, male or female, based on a uh, what you want, I guess. So, uh, but yeah, I decided that, uh, the white mage in this game was gonna be a girl and that the name would be Lily because it's a nice little shout out to Pokemon, you know? I have a shout out to Final Fantasy, to Disney, to Pokemon, and, you know, three of my favorite games. And then there's Monty. Now, uh, I, uh, really didn't, uh, realized the connection at first I just went with Monty the monk because it's alliteration and it's cute but um Monty was in my head primarily because of sorry the topic's a little heavy but 
because I was thinking about uh, Monte Ohm. Uh, Monte Ohm was a uh, animator at a uh, Rooster Teeth, a uh, web-based uh, entertainment company. Um, if you're not familiar with their work, they are fantastic. They make so much good content. They're hilarious. Kind of not safe for work, but uh, it's a little bit aside the point. But anyways, uh, Monte, Monty, uh, passed away three years ago from a medical coma, and it kind of hit me hard. He was uh, one of the first uh, entertainers that I grew up following that passed away, and just kind of like on the online creative community, a lot of people were deeply affected by it. I I didn't know Monty personally. I, but Monty was just such a creative force, and the thing that I really connected to and still connect to about Rooster Teeth is that everything that they like. If you don't know, Rooster Teeth got started just by cool guys making a video, a machinima out of Halo, and. It's just pure creativity coming from non-professional source, and Rooster Teeth and Monty created professional work. But there's just something that's always been so unconventional about the way they've done things, and Monty has always been a source of inspiration for me, because I'm not an animator, not really an artist in the traditional sense, but I love entertaining, and I was always entertained by Monty's work, and his friends at Rooster Teeth every year around the time of Monty's passing, which coincidentally was uh, 10 days ago at the time of this recording. Uh, they always encourage people to be creative and to just go out and make something in honor of Monty. And I've always wanted to make a Let's Play. Always wanted to share something that I love with people. And only now have I finally gotten the tools necessary for me to do it, and I just kind of realized that everything kind of falling together for me to do this, and if in doing this I can honor someone who had such a profound impact on my life and so many other people's lives, then, then there's no reason for me not to do it, because I've had a weird experience uh, in life, like I said, I consider myself an entertainer. I'm in school to be an actor, but for several years, I couldn't even get into the acting school I wanted, but just Rooster Teeth and Monty and the stuff that they've created and just words that Monty has said, he inspired me in times when I doubted what I wanted to do, and he kept me going, kept me entertained, kept me happy, and now I'm in the acting school I've wanted to go to. I'm learning how to be an actor, how to be a performer, and like I said, I'm trying to share something that I love, and if I can do that and at the same time honor honor someone like that then I can't think of anything that would mean more to me <sighs> sorry I imagine that's very heavy and I guess uh, guess with that that's kind of the explanation for why I named uh, the monk Monty but I just want to say uh, I'm I think I'm going to end it here now. It's, uh, kind of got out everything I wanted to say in this episode. And I just kind of want to end on these final thoughts. Don't ever stop trying to make something. We're all artists in our own way. Like, you know, even people who think they aren't they make something amazing, like a construction worker builds a building and 
seeing it get built, you realize how much goes into making a building, and that's a work of art, like plumbing, elec electrical wiring, making these things that people rely on work, that's a work of art, and the more traditional artists, you know? The people who get up there on stage, or who make a painting, or make a video, that's art. The people who work in business, who can figure out a way to make a company work together to sell a product to people, that's art. And you know, just going out there, talking with friends and family or strangers, just interacting with people and being with people who you enjoy and love, making memories, that's art. And you know, the internet can make a lot of bad things happen, you know? It's very easy to be cruel and mean, but the internet is capable of also sharing so much good. I'm getting the chance to share something I love and enjoy, this game that came out 30 years ago, and I get to share this with people, and though I stumble through my words and I don't know what to say all the time, it is something I wouldn't trade, so just know that you can always create something and you're always making something, even when it feels like you don't. Even when it feels like you can't, you are. And just keep going because that thing you want, it's it's closer than you realize. I'm Doug, and uh, thanks for watching. And remember, I'm... I'm happy you're here. Bye.